What's up, everybody? It's Justin Little here from Worry Max Escarpment, and today we are going to talk about my favorite topic, and that is the stats from the previous month. This is my favorite time of the month because I am a huge stats nerd, and I absolutely love that the story these numbers can tell to tell us not only what's happening in the market, but potentially where it could be going. Helps us give a better understanding of what's going on. So let's jump into it with my favorite number, or I guess the one that we got to start with first, is the average purchase price. So it looks like the average price has dropped. Juno was 828. Now it's down to 789. Now you might say this is because there's a difference in the number of sales, but there was actually a very little difference in the units that were sold, which we'll get into. But this is quite a significant drop. So we've seen interest rates go down twice. Yeah, for some reason, the average price has gone down. Why could that be? Let's jump more into the numbers. So let's look at the uh, days on market and see where they're at. So at the end of July, we had 43 days on market was our average. Before that, it was 38, 31. So it looks like May, June, it heated up a bit. May had our lowest uh, days on market. But if we look, typically, I wanted to see between June and July, the average days on market doesn't, I mean, it went up one year in 2022, but last year it hovered around the same. So it doesn't look like it's typical for the days on market to increase this significantly. I mean, it did in 2021 by three days. So it's not really a significant bump, but uh, so it's not something we typically see. So we see prices going down. We see days on market extending, even though we have two interest rate drops. Okay. Let's look at a few other stats as to why prices might be going down and why homes are taking longer to sell. If we look at the amount of new listings and sales, so the amount of new listings to hit the market was 1,236. The month before that, 1,274. So it looks like the bulk of our listings this year were in May at 1,440. It's starting to decrease every month, the number of new listings hitting the market. However, sales are also decreasing. May was our highest sale month with 655. In July, we had 507. June, we had 533. So the amount of sales is decreasing. We've seen a bit of a decrease in the amount of inventory hitting the market, but it's still pretty level. So price is going down, days on market extending, sales going down. Let's look at the total active listings, where we ended at the month for July. So at the end of July, we had 2,000 homes on the market. Is there any time in the last five years we had 2,000 homes on the market? No, there's not. So this is more than in the last five years, might even be 10 years, but this is more in the last five years. This is the highest inventory level that we've had. So this could be the explanation why we have such high inventory. This is why when buyers have a lot of options, the prices tend to go down. The days on market extends just because buyers have a lot of options out there. Um, so that's something to keep in mind as well, because if we look at the months of inventory to determine what type of market we're in, well, the months of inventory is four. If you're new to this channel, I love this number because this tells us how long it would take every single listing in Hamilton to sell if no other listings got listed. So currently it would take four months. Four months is considered a balanced market. Zero to three is the sellers. Three to six is balanced. Six plus is a buyer's market. So the Hamilton market is sort of in this balanced market, but I think it's starting to shift because you can see in May it was 2.9. Heck, even in March, it was 2.2. And it's been increasing every single month. So the market's been shifting out of that seller's market into a balanced market. Buyers have a lot of choices because there's a lot of inventory. So this is resulting in the prices to come down because sellers have to be more competitive with their prices to compete with all the other listings out there. So I've said this in a previous video. I'm not sure if it's on YouTube or previously, but I do think actually it was last week. If you're looking to buy or sell first, currently in this market, I would say if you're planning to make a move, it would probably be smart to sell first. Why? Because obviously there's a lot of inventory to choose from when you're buying. But when you sell, first we're seeing a longer days on market. You have lots of competition out there. I think it's important that you get the sale done first to know what you have in your pocket because you're going to have a lot of options out there. Just make sure you get a longer closing. So if you do have questions about that, reach out. But I'm curious, what are your thoughts on the market? I mean, we see two interest rate drops, but here we are. Lower prices, longer days on market, months of inventories up, total active listings, inventories at like a high in the last five years. I'm curious to see what you think. Anyways, we'll talk again. Take care.